Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this evening uh, as for part of our Blues From Home program. Uh, we're into week four uh, and we are into, um, yeah, the fourth session of our Staying Healthy in Lockdown series. Uh, we've had some fantastic guests over the course of the first uh, three weeks and, and tonight is no exception. Um, this is something that uh, I've wanted to uh, link in with, with Brianna and, and MindFit for some time now. Uh, it's a concept I, I really strongly believe is, is an area we as a club need to be increasing uh, the resources we provide our, our coaches and our players in. Um, so this is something that I'm, I'm really excited to sort of start this journey tonight with Brianna. We've been talking for a couple of weeks now. We've done a QA and a that hasn't quite gone up online yet, which is my fault, which is also really valuable. But tonight is, uh, is a really good opportunity. We're, we're joined by uh, Brianna Vincent from MindFit. Uh, Brianna is a mindset and human behavior specialist. Um, and what we're gonna be talking about tonight is sort of identifying and recognizing some behavior types and some, some um, some some traits in our in our children and our athletes, I guess, from a coaching perspective, but also from a parenting perspective, and and how to communicate with them to sort of best unlock their uh, potential and 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 get the most out of them uh, day to day. So, Brianna, thank you very much for for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Um, just quickly, just a really quickly, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if anyone has any questions throughout um, the preference is probably just to type it into the chat function and, and I'll, I'll um, ask the questions as we go through or if you want to type a question in for the end there will be some time for questions at the end where you can turn your microphone on um, and ask Bree some questions um, or use the chat as the questions come up if it's topical and you want to just type it in quickly um, and then if it's if it's um, appropriate and I can jump in without interrupting Bree too much I'll, I'll ask the question on your behalf if you like if we don't have time to get to all the questions we will take a screen capture of the questions and we'll we'll send them through to Bree and hopefully we can get to them later I hope that's okay with her I haven't checked yeah, yet so, no, that's fine. <laughs> so um, also probably best to have your um, screen set to active speaker um, that way Brie will stay on the screen, but she's also going to do a screen share of her presentation. So whenever you're ready, Brie, fire away. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Jared. I'm so, I'm really excited to do this for the Blues. Um, for those who don't know me, so I am a human behaviour specialist and mindset coach, um, but I'm also a mum um, of a young junior Blues player um, as well. So this is a really important um, thing that I feel that Blues are doing, and I'm really grateful that I can be part of it and help and support in some way to help all of these kids and athletes in such a challenging time. Um, as all of you would know as parents and coaches that sometimes one of the biggest things, um, one of the biggest challenges in life anyway is often um, helping them to stay strong in themselves and believing in who they are, um, let alone adding in um, what we're experiencing right now. So I, yeah, I wanna say thank you to Jared for, for doing this, not only, um, from my perspective as a, as a coach, but as a parent as well, because I think it's really paramount and really important. And I just wanna help and support um, you guys as parents and as coaches to have the, um, some tools to really start helping them now. Um, MindFit itself um, is a concept that uh, my husband and I actually came up with. Um, I've been a coach um, now for the last eight and a half years. Um, and I've really, something that I've, worked with a lot is actually with a lot of kids and seeing um, the pressures that can come from themselves often as well um, to really succeed and, and to reach their potential. And I believe the earlier that we can help and support them um, to get to that space, the better off they'll, they'll be in the long run. Um, I've also obviously worked at the other end, working with a lot of people who have been through, um, you know, the want, wanting and desire to do something and then haven't gotten there. Um, so I've seen the flip side and, and what can create that. So I'm really one of those people that I love studying people. So I want to help and support with giving you guys the tools and the statistics and the stuff that I've um, discovered and just to help you get the best out of these kids and really support them, especially as they come back from, as we say, you know, a really challenging time. So 
Um, I do have a bit of a presentation, so I'll just share some stuff with you just to help you sort of understand what you can be expecting as they come back in and just some ways um, to help them and some tools that, some, with some things that they can start doing. Um, because one thing um, that we do see a lot, obviously in sport, as you would all know, um, is that it, a lot is focused around the physical ability and the physical strength um, and the thing that I see that sort of stops somebody from succeeding and not reaching their potential the most is actually their mindset strength. Um, and so that's where the mind fit came from because it's about helping you to um, strengthen your mind um, as much as your body and realizing that our mind is actually like a muscle and we need to work it to get it to where it needs to be. Um, so that's just sort of a little bit about my background and, and what we're here, if you know, what MindFit is here to do. Um, and, you know, as I say, we're really passionate about it. And especially when I do have kids, you know, coming through um, these spaces as well, it's something that, you know, I, I see that's important for, for all kids. Um, and I, I've certainly noticed a difference in, in any kids that I've worked with and given these tools to um, in the future. So I will jump into my presentation. And please, yeah, feel free to ask questions, post them in the chat for Jared. Otherwise, at the end, I will open it up and um, people can jump on. I'll let Jared sort that part out. Um, <laughs> just the oh, checking good. side of these things can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. Just let me get to my, oh, and it's disappeared. So let me just have to find it. Sorry, guys. I had it all up ready to go. Hang on, here we go. <clears throat> and I'll just share my screen with you all. Just let me know when you can see it too, if that's cool. Is that all yep. up there? Yep. Yeah, awesome. that's perfect. Yep. Awesome. So my approach tonight is just is pretty much talking about how we can stay mind fit. And especially as I say, moving into the phase of obviously, you know, thinking about when we're going to come back into sport. And it's it's going to be sort of I suppose, depending on when they allow us back in, I suppose. But you know, there is things, and especially like when it comes to um, obviously blues, there is that potential that when they step back in, they're going to be coming quite quickly into um, tryouts and all those sorts of things. So it's looking at, well, what can we start doing now to help kind of prevent those bigger outbreaks and bigger um, meltdowns when we get into that space? So how can we start building that right now versus you know, look, we can look at a reactive method as well. And there's certainly stuff in there that I, you know, can help and support you with when somebody is already in that space. But I like to look at it from a preventative method, um, first and foremost. And a bit like Jared and I spoke about the other day, it really is a little bit like um, strength and conditioning um, on the physical body, but for the mindset side of it. So... Our mission um, at MindFit is to support as many people as possible, um, really to empower themselves to reach their potential and become as MindFit as they can um, to achieve their goals. Sadly, 95% of people were actually preconditioned not to succeed and not to reach their goals. And that's what our mission is actually to turn that around. And the reason why, it's not their, often their physical ability or their skills or anything like that. It's actually the mindset side of it. So our mission is to help make those statistics um, reduce from about 95% down to as, as low as we possibly can. So that's our mission um, as, as a project that we're doing. Um, and what does it actually mean to be mind fit and why is it actually really important is that we can all have the physical ability in the world, but to reach that highest level, the thing that stops most people is their mental capacity. You know, and you see this often, um, you know, in elite athletes as well is that, you know, they can be doing really well and what it's, it's not while they're going well, it's when challenge comes into play where you start to see what the actual strength of somebody's mindset is. And that's what, you know, we'll be seeing coming out of this phase is because we have been in a really big challenging time and we're going to see a lot of, um, a lot of kids and, you know, even young adults that are going through their own stuff that may not be able to express it. And the moment that then pressure is applied, we will start to see all sorts of things happen. So what we want to do is to help you know, turn that around now. Um, and it really means that we need to sort of start strengthening that mindset, fitness and capacity um, sooner rather than later, as we're doing the same with the physical body, which Blues are doing a great job of that. So if we can add the two together, we're going to end up with some really strong athletes coming back into um, their sports, which I'm sure everybody is really missing. Um, so what are we likely to see on the other side of this challenging time? So some things that you will start to see in kids 
um, are things like anxiety. So anxiety about their ability to live up to the standard, um, the standard expectations. So, you know, like in the past, like we would have a certain expectation and they'll know that. So they'll know it because they've been in it and they're going to have this anxiety coming back in thinking, am I going to be able to keep up to that same expectation? So we will start to see that happening. And often when we look at anxiety, it's, it's looking you know, into the future. So it's looking to a space where it hasn't actually happened yet, but they know that that's coming. And so that can start to build anxiety. So you, you could be seeing some of that now, or perhaps you might not see it now, but you might start to see it as it gets closer um, towards that time. So I'm going to give you some stuff that you can start doing um, with them now that can help um, counteract that. Some other things that you might start to see is a lack of self-belief in their decision making. So this is where, you know, sometimes you'll see um, kids that, you know, like might have been prior to this, you know, really strong in their decision making when it came, comes to the game. You know, they might be, you know, very firm in their own ability. But what you might start to see on the other side of this is a real lot of hesitation. And that will just come down to their lack of self-belief because of the fact that they haven't had, you know, coaches around them. They haven't had, you know, been able to do the full practice and all those sorts of th things. So what happens in times like this is the lack of the, the sense of belief will start to diminish. And especially if it wasn't overly strong there in the first place. Um, some other things will be that a lack of ability to use their willpower to perform. So based on one way of coaching and teaching. So what often happens is, and this is nobody's, you know, this is not pointing fingers at anybody or anything like that, but we are all kind of conditioned in our own way. It's like, let's say, you know, as a coach and, you know, often we can use that approach in a normal circumstance. But what often happens now for kids is because their willpower won't be as strong when they're in a space where it's continuing to build, which is what they had prior to this, they've got quite a bit of it and they can adapt an approach to one way of being. But what you'll see coming back in, that that'll actually be quite challenging for them to do. So it's a really going to be a really interesting time for coaches and parents to really have to try and adapt to these new ways as well. So this is not only going to be about the kids needing to adapt to a new way, it's also going to be really challenging for the coaches and that to have to try and deal with all this sort of stuff as well. So that's why we want to help equip the coaches um, and the parents with as much stuff to support them because knowing what they're going to be sort of heading back into. Some other things are, you know, some fear of not getting back in. So potentially that's, you know, often the case is that they might have this fear that I'm going into these triads and I'm scared I'm not going to get back in. And then not having the internal strength to believe that they can. Because what often happens that comes from that internal strength often is when we're doing something, when we're doing something and then we're achieving a goal and we're, we're reaching those heights. But when that's not there, that strength isn't being built quite as strong. So we need to come up with some ways that we can do that that aren't just reliant on being in the actual physical game and getting the praise in a physical game. Um, another one would be a need to be validated and understood. So they're going to have a real need to be understood because they're not really going to know themselves in the game anymore um, and be really validated for the things that they're doing really, really well. Um, another one is being motivated in a way that speaks directly to each individual. So each, and I've spoken with Jared about this, and I'm not going to go too much in depth in this um, chat because it is something we're looking at sort of in a little bit in the future. But we, we look at each, there's kind of like groups of behaviours and groups of what you would call probably personalities and energy types. I like to look at it as an energy type rather than a personality because energy can move and change a little, whereas personalities is kind of seems quite stuck. Um, but they're all, there's, there's four different types that we look at and each different type is really motivated in a different way. So it's then being able to understand, well, how are each of these kids motivated and how can we adapt to ensure that they're getting the, the motivation that they need? Um, and the biggest one that I think you're going to see a lot, which I'm not, it's not discounting any of the, those others, but is the lack of connection with others. Because they've been in isolation for so long, there is going to be this real kind of disconnect initially. And I actually think that's going to be one of the biggest factors that needs to be, you know, really worked on once they're back in that space to, to do things to really get them connected back to each other, back to themselves, back to the game, um, and really being able to work together 
um, again, because it's going to be quite foreign and it's going to be different because obviously there's going to be probably be some restrictions in place with all of that too initially. So that will be one of the biggest ones that I think we'll see, you know, for quite some time. It's going to take a, a lot longer to get a team connected um, and developed as, as one as what it would be if we weren't in kind of a challenging space like right now. I'll open up if there's any questions for, if any came through in that, that part, Jared, if you like, before I move on to the next slide, if there anything came through in that. Nothing in the, nothing in the chat at this point, Bree. Uh, does anyone have any, any questions? Does anyone want to ask any questions before we move on? Feel free to uh, turn your mic off or jump in in the chat. Otherwise we'll, we'll keep moving through. Going once, going twice. No, I think we're okay, Brie. We'll, we'll keep moving okay. for now. And, um, if anyone has any questions, please yeah, feel free to just use the chat. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So the next part that I want to really look at was how, you know, based on those things that we're going to potentially see, how do we prevent the severity of it by using, you know, our approach? So as a parent or as a coach, what are some things that we can do to help prevent that severity of those things that we've just looked at? So some things that you can start to do, especially when it comes like, so for the first one, if we're looking at anxiety is really reassuring them that it's actually okay that they feel the way they do. And I think this is one of the biggest things that we often forget is about validating someone's emotions to actually be okay. We're very quick to try and sort of say, oh, it'll all be all right, it'll all be all right. But what often happens is then it tells them that that feeling that they're actually feeling isn't okay. Whereas the moment we actually validate it, it moves really quickly. And I don't know if um, anybody's experienced that before in themselves, but sometimes it's, you know, we often will tend to hold on to it. But the best thing that we can help these kids do is actually move that emotion. So if I like to look at emotions that they're energy in motion. Um, so if we can help them do that, one of the best ways is literally just to say, you know what, it's okay that you're feeling the way you are right now. Um, and realistically, at the moment, you can, you know, you can use that concept that everyone is in the same boat. So, you know, like, and that's something that I've been even sh sharing with my son, because I know for him, you know, there's a few little bits and pieces. And I just say to him, mate, it's okay you're feeling like that. It's okay. You know, it's huge what's just happened. The fact that you've just had all your sport taken away. And you know what? Don't worry, because everybody else going back in is going to be in the exact same boat. And it literally will shift their, their internal feeling really quickly. So that's just one thing that you can do, especially when it comes to anxiety. Um, another one that you can do, especially when it comes to the self-belief side of them, is to really empower them to trust in themselves. And one of the best things that you can do with that, because they'll be like, but how do I do that? Because I'm not in this game right now is to remind them of the times when they have believed in themselves and remind them of some times when they've done really well. Um, and this is one of the things that, you know, Jared and I have spoken about quite, you know, in some of our other conversations is a lot of visualization is a great one, but initially for kids, even just that reminder will trigger that visualization and take them back to a time when they did believe in themselves. So just really reassuring them that they've, they've had that sort of feeling before, so they can absolutely have that again. Um, one of the greatest things that you can do as a coach or as a parent is learn how your kids function. So at, and what I look at it as their natural state. So how do they function best in their natural state and apply your approach accordingly? Now, the reason why we look at it from a natural state point of view, rather than a kind of a conditioned point of view is because when a challenge comes into play, it doesn't matter. So what, what it is, like let's just say pressure is applied in a game, their natural state is what will always kick in. So when we can understand them in their natural state and how to get the very best out of them in the natural state, you actually find that they become far better to then actually help condition them in other ways to learn other ways of being, but they have to learn how they are first. And so that's something um, that we are looking to do potentially down the track is to teach you about how we identify how these kids function in the best way is in their natural state. So looking at these different energy types and personalities, and then how do you apply your approach as a coach or as a parent accordingly to those as well. Um, so it's just looking at, sometimes it can be just a, a, literally just a switch in the language, or it might be just a different way of saying something or just a slightly different approach of actually approaching them with feedback or those sorts of things. And it's amazing what happens when you change like this tiny little amount, what you'll actually get as a result out of that um, will be far greater. And you know, I've, I've watched it and I've seen it play out so many times. And 
people literally go, but that, that, that's not going to work. And when it does, they're like, oh my gosh. And literally that was like something, something so simple or what seems so simple yet we often just, um, just kind of don't, don't see it at the time. Um, another one would be to remind them that they've done it once before. So like I said before, so reminding them that they've done it before so they can absolutely do it again. Because again, like if there's this anxiety happening, they're looking so far into the future and they kind of forget about what might have happened in the past. So it's just get, getting them to tell themselves, I've done it before, I can do it again. You know, and it's then it's looking at, well, what's, you know, how do they, what do they need to do to then work towards what it is that they want? So I've done it before, I can do it again. What, how did I do it before? What, what did I believe in myself? So getting them to kind of really dig into themselves and go, well, you know, I've had that strength and where did that come from? Um, and that then comes into play as well with, val with us as parents and coaches, then validating their strengths before you validate any challenges in them. So one of the biggest um, things that, you know, I would recommend as a coach in any stage would be to always give feedback with a positive first before you give the negative. And the reason being, especially in young kids, because young kids really feel um, feed off being validated. They wanna be understood. They wanna feel like that, you know, that they're important and they're there to please and they're like sponges. So the best thing that you can do is validate their strengths because the moment they, you've got them in a good space, you've got them and you've connected with them and they'll listen to you. They'll hear then the things that they can improve on. If you go straight to the challenge, they're not going to hear anything that you actually say because they'll go straight into, I'm not good enough. See, you have just validated to myself that all those things that I think about myself. So add in, um, COVID and all the challenges that they'll be experiencing right now, this one itself is going to be paramount as a parent, as a coach to really hone in on what their strengths are and get them to focus on that for a bit before you get them really focusing on the parts that they're challenged by, um, you know, and really give them kind of, I suppose, an empowerment to improve by incentivizing them rather than punishing them. So that's another thing that we often see is that, you know, kids will, even as young adults, will get, you know, kind of punished for, you know, doing things wrong versus being incentivized for doing things right. Um, and I would really emphasize that one a lot because when, you know, kids are hard on themselves and they will be harder on themselves coming back in, they're already punishing themselves and you'll probably find that you don't need to do much um, to get them into a much stronger sort of place. The other one that I would say that's really important and what, you know, is looking at what actually motivates them. So what motivates these kids and looking at them from an individual perspective and getting really connected with them to understand that, like finding out what motivates them because you can use that then to really drive them forward and to work with them rather than kind of, you know, feeling like you've got to push them or anything like that. So finding out how you can um, get into their, their way of being that happens really quite naturally, that will amplify them so much more than feeling like you're doing it from a perspective that doesn't al align to them or relate to them and feeling like you have to um, push them along. And then the last thing that I'll say that's going to really be helpful as a, an approach from a coach or from um, a parent is trying to build in lots of fun and connection. Because if we look at the state that we're in and we look at it from a human behaviour developmental level, Everyone is what we call in level one, which is stuck down in survival mode. So everybody's very reactive and we're literally in a space where it's just about survival and they're going to come back into the game in that space. The next step to get out of survival mode is all around connection. It all is around connection with themselves, with each other, with, you know, feeling like they belong again, because that's what they're feeling like they don't, that they don't belong. So one of the best things that you can start doing is really trying to bring in a lot of fun and connection and making them feel like that they're important and that, and that they do belong back in these teams again. Um, they, they'll be really important in the approach coming back in. Are there any questions on that part so far around how we can start preventing this severity? We've got one question that's yep. come through, uh, Bree, and, and it, it's a, it's, uh, it's a really good question and it was raised with Bethany uh, from Headspace a couple of weeks ago as well. But I, I think 
Um, and she provided some really good resources, and I think you'll it'll probably be something that you're getting asked a fair bit at the moment as well. Yeah. Uh, around the fact that in this lockdown, what our kids are having to deal with, um, which which sort of separates them from last time, is that that sort of fear of missing out. I guess that that their kids are aware that other states are playing sport. Um, and they may have friends and family and contacts interstate that are talking about how they're returning to the stadium, returning to training, returning to footy, whatever it might be. Um, it, do you have any sort of techniques you can use, I guess, to, to address the feeling that they're falling behind skills wise? Yeah, absolutely. So this is what, what's being attacked in that space is their worthiness. So there is, yes, it's a sense of belonging, but what comes from that sense of belonging is this sense of worthiness and, and validation. So when we have a need to belong, it really is around getting, you know, that connection with others, that, that validation. So some things that I think are really important right now that can be done. Obviously, you know, it's, it's challenging because we can't say, oh, you know, let's go out and like connect on a physical level because we can't even do that. But it is really, I think, would be fantastic to start creating spaces like Zooms and things for the kids to be connecting and, and talking about goals. So giving them some things that they can be working on themselves, but that they want to come together as a team and do together as a team. So, you know, that it is, I think you're right. It's actually probably one of the biggest challenges because there isn't a lot on a physical level that we can do about it. But the thing that I suppose that they need a lot of validation in those in those spaces is to really empower them um, that they will have their time and that, that, you know, this isn't going to be forever. And to start focusing on some things that they would like to achieve on the other side of this, um, you know, because it's really is, it does come down to that lack of self-worth and it's looking at, well, how can we start to build them up so that they can believe in themselves to know that they are worthy of belonging again? So, you know, I know, um, you know, you guys, Jared, are doing a really great job of doing as much as you can to bring them into spaces to connect, but perhaps it really needs to happen on a team level as well. Like, and it might need to be, especially right now, a little bit more um, often than, than not. And perhaps it might even sometimes be, you know, a great time not only to be part of like, you know, the team as a, in, in, a, in a group, but even like a coach like a one-on-one -on -one session with, you know, the coaches here and there, like just for them to feel validated, to know that they still belong to a team and that they're still part of the club, that they're not, you know, yes, it's it's challenging that they're missing out on the actual physical side of it. Um, but it really is when it comes down to that, the, the challenge for them is that that sense of belonging and not feeling like they're worthy enough of having that um, yeah, as I say, you know, look, it is, it's a really tough one. And some of the things that I'll talk about later um, or in the next slide will probably help that as well. So some of the, the tools and techniques that you can get them to start doing and something that I'm happy to do. And, you know, we can talk about it later, Jared, but it might be, you know, helping them. Um, I can actually do some, some meditations and some things like that, that, some tools to give the kids that they can start, you know, visualising how they would like it to be when they go back. So kind of, you know, getting them to paint the picture of how they would like it to be and then looking at, well, how I would like it to be, then who do I need to be? What do I need to work on within myself? You know, do I need to believe in myself more? So maybe I need to be starting to telling myself, um, some more positive things to really build up my self-esteem. Um, you know, is it that I my I feel like right now that I'm not belonging? So who do I need to connect with? So who like how do I surround myself with like-minded people? So I don't know if that's something from a club perspective or whether it's looking at it, you know, maybe it might be a message out to the coaches or the coaches who are on here. Perhaps that could be a really good tool to to start creating for your teams is those um, times together on Zoom or ways that you can keep them connected and making them feel like they belong. Perhaps, you know, it might be a message from the coach every now and again and telling them some things that, you know, that, that they see that are a great strength in them, that, you know, they're looking forward to them being back in the team, sort of building them up to that space um, are some, definitely some things that they can start doing, but it definitely is a, a very challenging one um, because we can't change it on a physical level, so to speak. Does that answer that question for you? I think so. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good answer. Um, we we and, and look, I, I won't go into too much detail here because I want to keep things moving, but we do have a plan around the next four weeks of um, sort of our blues from home. Yep. 
some more interaction with with coaches and things like that. It's a difficult transition right now because it's not really last season and it's not really next season yet. So we're in between sort of coaching appointments, but having locked in our um, coaching coordinators is a really big step to um, to getting towards that. Yeah, you know, having some age group coaches running sessions for just the under 12 boys, just the under 12 girls and having that integration back in their age groups. Um, so maybe not in their specific teams just yet, but, you oh, know, okay. It'll, it'll help prepare for tryouts. So if there are any coaches or parents listening that are sort of concerned about that, there's a bit of a plan around that for um, for our next stage of, of our Blues from Home. And and we're, we're looking at doing some, some stuff. Obviously, Brianna, you've been involved. We're also looking at doing some meditation stuff as well. So stay tuned for that without saying too much. We'll, we'll, we'll get into more of that later. Yeah. Look, as I say, I think it's one of the most challenging ones because it's not some, not something that we've ever faced before either. So it's not like, you know, we can go, well, in the past, in something like this, we would have done X, Y and Z. So it really is a bit of a, it is a challenging one, but definitely connection is the key um, in here on that, whether, as I say, right now, it all has to be online. Um, but even perhaps for those who are really feeling it strongly, like you say, Jared, like you might be stuck, you're stuck sort of in that middle season, but perhaps they can connect with their, their team that they were in with last season, just to keep that, that connection and feeling of belonging alive for them. And that might even be something that some of the parents can arrange or, or whatever. But yeah, definitely yep. that, that would be the key that I would say it's all got to be around connection because it really is that sense of needing to belong yep. to something bigger than themselves in a time when we can't kind of belong anywhere at the moment, can we? It's it's very, very strange time. Yeah. But, yeah. So some of the tools that I, you know, that I would be using to help athletes build their mindset strength, validation and empowerment are big ones. So really validating and, and a lot of empowerment, but also, you know, giving them some, some things that they can be doing um, as well to empower themselves. So some things that, you know, like I would talk about, like Jared and I were just saying before, meditation and um, visualization. So it's being able to see themselves as their most empowered self or as achieving their goals. So, Getting them to connect with something that they've already achieved is a great way to visualise. Um, and these are certainly things that might come in down the track, but these are just some tools that, you know, you can start to look into. And, um, you know, I certainly, we're going to be hosting a, um, uh, like some podcasts and stuff coming up soon for MindFit. So there might be some tools on that as well that, that could be helpful. Um, gratitude is a really great one. So we can't have anxiety and gratitude at the same time. It's actually physically impossible. So if somebody's suffering from those moments of feeling like they're really missing out or they're, you know, they're, they're, they're worried about what's ahead. Having gratitude is a really powerful practice. Now I actually say to people, don't wait until you're in those modes to get to that, you know, to do these practices. If you can get them to start doing some stuff on a daily basis, you'll find that's how we build that fitness. That's how we build that strength. It's a bit like a muscle. We don't wait until we've got no strength to then go to the gym and lift heavy weights. We build them up each day. And the same thing happens with our mind. The more we build it, the stronger that it will get. Um, so gratitude, as I say, is a great one. So I usually say to people five to 10 things each morning that they're really grateful for about what they have right now and what they prob probably have had in the past, um, particularly in, in this sort of sense. So, you know, looking at, you know, they're grateful that, that, you know, they're part, that they've been part of a team and that they're part of a great club and that they're grateful that they will get to come back into that space again. Um, so just getting to them to focus on some positive things um, and that will just help set them up um, you know, and building that strength for themselves. Anchoring tools. Now, this is something that, you know, um, not a lot of people probably understand, but so I'm an NLP practitioner, which NLP is retraining the brain. Um, so anchoring tools actually allow them and help them. So everything like, you know, how our muscles have muscle memory, um, so does our mind when we, when we do certain things with it. So we can actually... Um, when I say, oh, we all know our mind has memory, but memory to, to certain actions that we can do. So we can actually anchor certain things to ourselves. So um, like as an athlete, if I was working with an athlete, we'd actually anchor certain, like as a basketballer, we'd be trying to anchor in certain shots that they know will get in really well. So you can use it on a physical level, but you can also use it on a mental and emotional level as well. So anchoring in really positive emotions. So just as an example, I did one um, for my son and so we he would find that he often would let the emotion build up and he didn't know what to do with it so we've actually created like a little anchoring tool on his on his leg and what we added into that is like helping him to feel more empowered in himself so it actually anchors in emotions so when you actually connect to that space 
it instantly changes their their emotional state. So obviously they're not things that you can do straight away, but that's certainly stuff that um, I'll be looking at doing some videos and bits and pieces as part of mine. Fit and it might be something that again, the blues might want to look at, but anchoring tools and you can look up what they are. Um, and there's certainly different ones that you can use um, to help anchor in some positive states. And even just a simple way to do that is a bit like what I said before, is getting them to think back to a time when they actually felt really empowered in themselves. That's an anchoring tool because it's connecting them back to something that's, that they already know. It's already within their, they've already felt it before. Um, but as I say, you know, it's something that it's definitely a great practice, but it's probably something we need to probably go into a little bit more detail to help you do that one. But some simple ones that you could do are things like I am statements. So getting them to t tell themselves, you know, things that they are really like about their strengths. So, you know what, I am, you know, I am a great basketballer. I am really good at what I do. I am a really great, whatever it is for them. You know, I am um, a great friend. I, you know, all those things that just help them to feel better about themselves. So this is just building those, those muscles to to help them believe in themselves. A great one when it comes to the negative things. So going back to even that question before, this could be a powerful one for that, is journaling. A great way to shift emotions is actually to write it out. So if they're feeling a lot of stuff, get them just to write, you know, say, you know what, it's okay that you're feeling that way. How about you just write it all out? Nobody has to see it, but just get it out. Because the worst thing we want to do is get them to hold it in. So I often, I get, you know, kids, adults, whoever, the, anybody that's holding on to a lot of stuff, the moment you write it, it means it's out of you and it's gone. Like it's not in your physical body anymore. So if they are feeling like, you know, that life's not fair and that things are really hard for them, get them to write it all. Um, and just, you know, whether they want to, you know, eventually burn it or, you know, dispose of it, they don't have to keep it, but it just means that they're getting their thoughts out and they're not keeping them in their, in their mind. Um, and the last one that I would say that's really powerful and is going to be great for this time is, is setting some goals and setting some intentions for how they want it to be on the other side. So what are some things that they would like to be achieving that perhaps they might not have achieved or perhaps they did achieve and, you know, would like to really strengthen that um, in the past, oh, sorry, from the past. Um, and intentions is a really powerful one. I like to use intentions along with goals because intentions are about creating kind of an emotion rather than just an actual thing. So it's almost, I always say to all of my clients, whether they're an athlete, whether they're in business, whether they're whatever, is what's the intention that you would like to have at the end of it? How would you actually like to feel? So if you're, as an example, like, you know, how do they want to feel at the end of each game? Like, what is it they would like to achieve? So if you look at that from a, perspective, a feeling perspective rather than an actual physical perspective, what happens is it's almost like everything else starts to work really well because their aim is to feel a certain way. And our feelings will actually, you know, trigger off our thinking and trigger off our behaviour. So if you can set, get them to start setting intentions, so like, you know, how do you want to feel when you get back onto the court? Well, I want to feel, you know, empowered. I want to feel strong. Okay, well, that's awesome. So how do we work towards that? Because those sorts of things sometimes can feel a lot more achievable, especially in a time like right now where they can't get on the court, where they can't do the things that they would like to do. So they can work on these things to help get them to where they want to be um, on the other side of this challenge. Are there any questions on those mindset tools? Uh, no, I don't think we've got anything at the moment. Has anyone got any, any questions for the mindset tools Brianna just talked about? Feel free to chuck your microphone on. Um, I, 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 I'm a firm believer. Sorry if I don't speak for you, Bree, but there are no bad questions um, in these webinars. I, I know I've run a couple as well throughout this time, and it's great to have that interactive, that feedback. So don't feel like you can't ask questions, guys. Please, please jump in and, and ask questions. And um, it's easy for me to say that because I'm not answering them. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm more than happy. Right. To questions and the same like you said Jared too earlier you know if you think of them afterwards because sometimes that's the case you hop off these things and you're like oh that's what I wanted to ask or you might think something might come to you later shoot them through to Jared and we can certainly get some answers back to you as well and along with some of these tools we can we can certainly look to some different things some different resources um, to help um, you know find some things that can be really helpful and perhaps you know we can yeah there'll be some stuff that we can we can certainly share with you to help make these things happen a little easier as well. Awesome. 
Otherwise, I think we're right to keep going. Awesome. Cool. We're on to our, our last slide anyway. So what can you do as a coach to get the best out of your players? So I know some of you will be parents, but, you know, I think this is really important. And um, in terms of it works for both anyway, but I think these are the things that I would really like to kind of share, you know, just to help these kids along through this path is, you know, all the things that we've mentioned previously, they're all going to help. Um, as coaches to get the best out of your players. Um, but like I said before, checking in on your team. So I think this is one of those ones where, you know, we said about belonging and the fact that yes, it is in between times, but my recommendation, and I don't know, and I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of, out of space here, Jared, but my recommendation is moving through to obviously the fact that it will be tryouts on the other side is perhaps that the teams that were in play before to really kind of, you know, keep a little bit of a strength there, um, just kind of that way that they do have something to belong to. Um, but obviously, Jared, as Jared said, there are some other things coming. So, um, you know, whatever, however that looks for you guys, obviously. Um, but yeah, checking in on your the team and the players is, is really um, powerful. And I know, um, you know, everybody wants to feel like they're seen and heard um, and feel like they belong. So that's definitely one thing as a coach that you can do, even if that's not going to be one of your players next, next season or anything like that. Just, to, you know, for them to hear from you and know that you, you're thinking of them is a really powerful way to help these kids. Um, giving your team positive feedback, like as I said earlier. So, you know, really making sure that they're getting the things that they see their strengths. You know, and I actually was listening into another, um, one of my mentors not that long ago, and he was saying one of the biggest issues, and he was actually an elite athlete over in the US. And he was saying that one of the biggest issues that he has seen um, is that in school and all sorts of things, we spend so much time teaching kids how to do the things that they're not good at. So kids, all they get taught in their own mind is that they're not good enough and that the things, and they start to learn that I've just got to work really hard on the things that I'm not good at, rather than focusing on the things that they're really good at and actually strengthening those a lot. Because when we strengthen the natural state, everything else can actually start to improve a lot more because a there's that sense of self-belief as well um but also it just it really then emphasizes the parts of them um in a in a great way and we're going to see you know one side come out really really powerful and the rest we can then you can then start to tweak and work on when they're really strong in in what they're naturally good at anyway um the other would be you know like we said earlier is learning to understand your players really really well and how to get the best out of them. And I've, you know, created lots of different stuff and I've worked with a lot of human behavior profiling tools. Um, and we've taken that into teams and into businesses and all sorts of stuff. And what it does help you do is it helps you to understand each player um, as an individual in terms of how they function, how they think, how they behave, how they'll make decisions. When we can understand that about each player and then look at it as a collective, as a team, then you know how you can get the best out of them as a player and as a team. And, you know, as I say, like, if you understand how somebody functions and, you know, reacts to certain things and behaves, you'll then also know how they're going to react and behave, you know, come time and there's pressure on them and all sorts of things. And it just helps you as a coach to really get the best out of each player, but also your team. So that's something, you know, that um, as I say, Jared and I have been talking about. Um, and it's certainly, you know, the more you can get to understand them from all those perspectives, the greater chance you have of, you know, helping them in your team, but also helping them as an individual and as an athlete to go on later on to really succeed. And the last thing that I want to say to coaches, and like I said before, less pressure, more connection and validation purely at this time this is not saying this has to be all the time but when we do see things in survival mode is it really does have to be about pulling back that pressure um, because if we look at it again from a human behavior you know developmental levels they're all in level one if we apply pressure which is really up around level four level five all you're going to do is that's when you're going to start to see kids drop off um, really get into heavy states of depression quit all those sorts of things. So what we really need to start doing, which I think the Blues are doing really, really well with all the programs that they're doing and all, you know, even, the, you know, these sessions and everything else that they've been giving is really about building that connection um, and that empowerment in the kids. And that's what I would recommend for all of you coming out on the other side of this is really that to be your focus. 
when you when you build connection and people feel safe and secure and belonging and you know they feel validated and empowered you'll get them to do just about anything for you but if you apply pressure before any of that's there they'll do nothing for you and that's where you know this is going to be a really interesting time because we've never experienced anything like this before um, but knowing obviously the developmental levels and seeing it in different ways um, play out definitely the, the biggest thing that you can you can really do is is, is get connected with, with the kids or with the players and really validate them for who they are as an individual and you'll get you you'll get everything out of them um, if you can do that with them and that's it from me are there any questions I had one question come through which was uh, which was great um, just in terms of the language uh, what we use as a coach and, and if it appears to be critical is is there do you have a list of things to, to say and not to say or different things to, to maybe avoid saying uh, to our kids yeah absolutely there's definitely look at from a human behavior perspective we look at it what we call above the line um, language and below the line language above the line language is all you know positive and empowering language because the thing that people forget is that the mind actually only hears what it hears. It doesn't hear the don't, couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't in front of it. All it hears is what's after that. So this is where it's really important that the language that we use does imprint, doesn't matter what age. I mean, as we get older, we get conditioned to understand what's said after those things. But that's the thing. We're actually conditioned to learn that. And it's not empowering and it's it, it certainly will never get the best out of it so as an example you know if you say to them you know don't you know don't use your right arm especially in a young kid you're going to go and see them use their right arm because all they've heard is use your right arm especially in times of pressure so if there's pressure on everything becomes automated so what you say will have more of an impact than when there's no pressure on so it's really important that we start saying to them the things that we want them to do, how we want them to be, how we want to see them. You will get so much more out of them if you start giving them that positive language. So as an example, you know, things like, depending on like, it'd be great if, you know, I suppose if you gave me an example of kind of a scenario, because then I can sort of give you the language that might be said in that, that space. Yep. I'll, I'll see if that person wants to come back with a bit of a scenario. I'll give them a second because they're, they're, they're probably, uh, or they can turn their microphone on if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it just be easier for me to talk. Um, yeah, first, great. Is that okay? What a wonderful yeah, yep. Thank you so much. And um, I agree, it's an incredibly challenging time trying to get the kids motivated um, to go back to blues basketball. And the huge anxiety for at least my son is missing top age 14s and going into bottom age 16s, which is a huge jump. And there's a lot of anxiety around, you know, bigger kids, am yeah. I going to be um, good enough? And with, with your last comment, I guess the thing that comes to mind is I've seen a lot of coaches at a timeout say something negative as the first comment. And you can see the kids almost instantly blank out yeah. and not listen to anything that's said afterwards. And, I guess, how, how do you frame, uh, you know, you need to stop doing this um, and do this, but not have the negative first, or maybe just don't say the negative and say, this is just what we need to do better, or is... Yeah, so in that approach, and I totally agree with you in terms of, you know, seeing that happen, the best thing you can do is, you know, in that space, in a, like, let's say it is in a timeout, though, you know what, the things that I saw you do really awesome and i'm really you know this is what's happening and it, it's working really well however these are the things that aren't working right now we just need to work on them in x y and z rather than that was terrible that was shit or whatever you know gets said it's it really does come back to how we language it and how it's phrased and also as well the body language that we use so that's the other part that i think is really important is is being able to as a coach reduce the emotion that you have when it comes to um, expressing. So, you know, passion is great. Passion is fantastic, especially in kids because, you know, they, they feed off that passion. But if it's coming from a negative energy, to, like a negative energy, and then there's negative language and negative talk, and that was terrible and X, Y, and Z, you're right. They won't hear anything. 
and you'll get nothing out of them for the rest of the game. So the best thing that you can then do is, is literally come into that space and go, you know what? Yep. These are the things that you're doing really well. However, these are the things that I really need you to work on to get us to this spot. So giving them the, the direction, giving them what you want from them, not what you don't want from them. Thank you. Can I ask another question, Jerry? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know if they ask me far away. Okay. Um, uh, I'm kind of a, a manager at work and we introduced um, what we call personality tests. I think you referred to them as energy tests um, a few years ago. And I must say, I find them incredibly valuable to motivating and leading people, determining what motivates them and how to get more out of them. Mm. Um, are there validated sorts of energy tests or personality tests for young people? And I'm thinking 10 to 14 years of age. Yeah. And I guess the question um, is, is it okay to administer them to the kids? And also Jared would blues mind if we did that early on in the season. Yeah. I'll let oh. Jared get to that bit first and then I'll answer my bit because, yeah, I, there is something. Go for it, Jared. Yeah, yeah we, that's actually part of what we've been... Well, I haven't been working on it at all. Um, <laughs> Brianna, it's part of what, what Brianna's going to be providing and, and, and mm -hmm. part of our partnership, I guess, um, that we're working through at the moment, Graeme. So, um, yeah, you've hit the nail on the head there. Um, certainly something we're looking at doing and that's Brianna's specialty and, and something she has is... Um, I guess those those toolkits for, for coaches to use for their teams um, and a few different resources, which is something that we're hoping um, also again to announce as a part of our second uh, our second four week block leading into the the school holidays. What would you know the, the term three school holidays as well. So my answer to that is yes, but but um, if you can just hold on, we'll, we'll Brianna's going to do one that's sort of more specifically. Um, sort of designed for coaches to be working with athletes as well. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but I do agree, Graham. I think it's a really powerful point that you make. And I think, you know, the greatest tool to helping anybody succeed is actually awareness. And the biggest thing that we're not taught as human beings is how to become aware and understand ourselves. And it fascinates me every single day. And I just think if we could be teaching this kind of stuff, you know, and the fact that, you know, blues are so open to this being taught to kids, this will not only set them up, you know, in their time of coming back to blues, this will set them up for life. Like if they learn to understand themselves and also to feel understood, that will just, honestly, that's the, they're the two biggest keys that I think, you know, if I deal with any adult dealing with, you know, in some, you know, and I deal with some adults in some really tough spaces, um, you know, they are the things that most often happen and literally everything that comes into play for most people has happened somewhere between zero and seven. So for the younger we can get them and help them to feel understood and aware of themselves and empowered in who they are, the greater the chance that they will succeed in all of their areas of life. And that's where, you know, these tools definitely, and I've found a really great one um, that definitely, you know, as I said, as Jared said, that we, you know, we've been talking about and then I'm adapting one and creating one um, for coaches as well. So it's specific to coaches to understand themselves as a coach and how to then approach all the different energy types. Um, but I'm also a big believer and why I call it energy over personality is a lot of personality tests so to speak, kind of pigeonhole people and can kind of put them in a box that they feel like then that's who they are and that they can only be in that way. So I like to look at them as like a growth model. So we look at them and go, okay, so who are you in your natural state? Which one is, is you to a T and how do we really embrace that? And then looking at knowing that we have all of those realistically in us and then understanding once we become really good in our strengths, then we can actually adapt and become what I call behavioral flexible as a player for a child or as a, you know, adult as well as a coach um, to adapt to all the different ways of being when we need to. Um, so that's, that's kind of the approach of what the ones we are that we're looking at um, and that we'll be moving forward. So that, I think that's a great question question Graham and I think that's great you know the fact that you've seen it in terms of how it's worked out in the workplace and it's a hundred percent like because kids are sponges and they really do when they start to learn about themselves they just they love it um, I think it'll be really powerful for the teams as well because we can look at as a team how that works best all good Graham does that I think does that cover uh, your questions there uh, yes it does thanks Awesome. awesome. Thanks for that. I've just got one more um, 
Bree, yeah. and and then we'll probably finish up because we're closing yep. in now on an hour. Yeah. Um, so we had a really good question about you talked about pulling back the pressure. Um, it's going to be really difficult. Um, and, and this parent that's asked the questions identified, obviously we're going to be coming out of tryouts now, uh, sorry, out of lockdown into tryouts. Now I will just comment quickly from a club perspective. Again, hasn't been confirmed yet that we'll be coming out of lockdown straight into tryouts. Obviously a lot of things haven't been confirmed. We fingers crossed we're, we're, we're coming out of lockdown mid September. We would usually have school holidays and then we would start tryouts that last Sunday of um, the second week of school holidays. That's generally our calendar. So this year would have the first day of um, tryouts on the, the 4th of October and running that right around till the 11th of October, I believe. Um, that, that hasn't been confirmed yet, given the situation and given the advice we haven't yet received from Basketball Victoria. Um, there is a group of, of sort of GMs and CEOs from other associations working together. And again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but there's been discussion about what that BJBL calendar is going to look like. And the fact that we want to allow the kids enough time to actually come back um, through development programs, through training, through domestic basketball, and really just enjoy playing the sport again and not have that added pressure and anxiety of tryouts just smacked on them straight away because um, we are conscious of the VJVL calendar, but we're also conscious, we need to be more conscious of their well-being. Um, so as much as we need to try and get a VJVL season going and, and get it sort of on target, um, the, these conversations are being had in those, those circles at association level and also at a VV level. But um, that's just from a club perspective without confirming too much, but also back to Bree, what what would you what advice would you have in terms of how to pull that pressure back and how to prepare kids maybe for coming out of lockdown? Mm. Let's say let's say we, we can't control it and, and BJBL does say no, we're going straight into grading the first week of November and we have to sort of rush back into tryouts. Obviously we'd do everything from a club perspective to make sure that the kids aren't in this pressure cooker straight away. But what mm. are some tips, let's say, if we do have to come out and go to tryouts pretty soon after Brianna? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Jared. Can I can I just jump in there real quick? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Mike, Mike Brianna. This is Mike who asked the question. Sorry. Yeah, I, it, it it was just um, I'm just thinking of the cycle that all of the kids have been have been in, where mm. you've started off with tryouts, you immediately kind of go into grading, where there's some more pressure. They had a little bit of a window there where they could just kind of relax and actually play basketball then into lockdown and Jared's addressed this very clearly there, but theoretically right back into tryouts of some sort. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like this cycle of pressure, pressure, a little bit of a release pressure. And um, mm -hmm. so how to kind of keep them motivated, but also, you know, not kind of getting burned out because there's not really that, that reward and, and Graham's, hit on this as well. My, my son actually plays on Graham's team as well. And so there's mm. even more pressure that they're coming out of 14s and then having to try out for 16. So it's, mm. it's great to say, pull the pressure back and kind of just relax. But the, knowing my son and a lot of the kids on our team, they'll put the pressure on themselves, you know? Yeah. So how to balance that they want to do the best. I was asking obviously about the pressure cooker of them going if they do go straight back in. So the best thing that they can do is obviously work on all the tips that I've given them as a preventative method. So start empowering them for in obviously is the best thing that we can do is obviously getting them built up to that that inner strength again because I think that's the thing that we will see that will be lacking the most, um, especially going back in. And if the, the more strength that they have when, a, when pressure gets applied, the, the less impact that it's going to have. But the best, the other part is, I suppose that, you know, and I, and I know that you guys are all over that, Jared, is in terms of blues, is obviously knowing from the coach's perspective that they perhaps are going to have to reduce their expectations a little as well. And perhaps that might need to be expressed that they know that these kids are coming back in, you know, off these big breaks. And I think that's what really needs to be reassured is that everybody is coming back into this space 
from the same base. No, you know, everybody, nobody's got an advantage because nobody's being able, you know, being able to do too much. Um, yes. Obviously, you know, the more that they practice themselves is obviously going to be, you know, empowering. Um, and obviously that all the programs you guys are doing are going to support all of that. But the best thing that they can come in doing is, is working on their own self-belief. And you know, as I said, all those tips that I gave earlier will definitely um, help and support that. Um, as well, you know, meditating is a really great and powerful tool because when we apply too much pressure to ourselves, we often are in what I would call like a very much a head state. And what we need to help them do is just get out of their head all the time and really kind of being able to connect to the whole, their whole self. And meditation is a really powerful way um, of doing that. And I can certainly, you know, as you know, we've spoken about and happy to, to do some um, that would be specific um, to these players to help and support them um, with, with that. Um, but definitely the best thing they can do is obviously work on themselves and, and get themselves into that mindset, knowing that they are coming back into this exactly the same boat as everybody else, that they you know, that they are still more than capable um, in the way that they are as a person, because I think that's what we think sometimes that, you know, our identity or our belief is based on what we are capable of versus who we actually are as a person. So um, if they can work on those preventative methods, they'll definitely come back in, in a much, um, much stronger state but as I say you know I think from the from the blues perspective or from the coaches perspective the way that they can do that is to reassure them that they understand that all these kids uh, haven't been playing for a long time and that you know we are obviously we do have you know expectations in terms of moving forward but at the same time we are very aware of that so you know it's kind of that reassurance again that you know, the same expect, we wouldn't expect you to be playing in exactly the same state as what it would have been this time last year um, yep. type thing. So, and just kind of, yeah, uh, you know, they, especially for those kids, like they were saying, that that is a tougher situation going into an older um, age group where they are going to be bigger, they are going to be stronger, but where they can be, you know, their advantage can be over those other kids is be bigger and stronger in their mind. Yeah. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head and um, yeah, we'll, we'll cut this together. Unfortunately, sorry, if you're watching this back, we got cut out there. That was my fault. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll cut that answer in. That was a great question by Mike about coming straight back into a, a tryout sort of a situation. We're, we're working through that right now from BV perspective about their VJBL calendar association perspective, but also with the coaching coordinators. Um, we're really, really lucky to have terrific coaching coordinators and terrific coaches. And and I think our families will have seen that when we came back into the stadium there for about a 10 day period, that everyone was really cognizant of the fact that the kids had been out of the out of training and, and out of the stadium and, and we weren't sort of rushing back in expecting them to be where they were when we left. And now that's been compounded by another, you know, eight to ten weeks of lockdown, probably a full term of term three and, and no actual season. So um, without saying too much from an administrative perspective. Uh, I'm confident that our coaches will do a terrific job of managing that when we come back. But we as a club will do the best we can to support the coaches and to then in turn support the kids. And this is a big part of it, what Brianna's bringing to the table and what MindFit's bringing to the table. And it's why it's so, so valuable to us as a club to have someone like Brianna um, available as a, as a resource and as a business. And um, it's just terrific what you're doing, Bree. And um, we really appreciate uh, you giving up your time tonight and, and for, for having chat chats with me throughout, throughout the sort of last two or three weeks to try and provide this for our families. Um, it's invaluable for us. And, and um, I thank you for the credit you give us because we, we really don't, we're just doing our jobs and, and it's our volunteers that are really um, putting their time in. And, and this is something that, um, you know, we, we have to be more active in this space. It's, it's our duty to our members. So um, we really appreciate you sort of getting the, the ball rolling with us in, in that space um, and, and, and making yourself available tonight. Um, and we look forward to, yeah, obviously what you've got in store for us and, and, and sort of working with you in the future. So thank you again for, for jumping on tonight. I'm sorry we got cut off there. It was a terrific, okay. um, mm -hmm. a terrific presentation and, and it will be a great resource that we will upload. Um, hopefully tomorrow we'll, we'll be able to cut it together and upload it for our families that couldn't tune in tonight. So thank you again, Brianna. Amazing. No, you're so welcome. And as I say, I know you say don't take the credit for it, but can I tell you, 
not a lot of people are doing the stuff that you guys are doing. So do take the credit. You're doing an amazing job. And, you know, I love that, you know, to be, uh, as, as a parent as well, to be part of a club like this that are doing this for our kids because not everybody is. And, you know, you'll, you'll, and not because they don't want to, but a lot don't know how. So, you know, take that credit for yourselves too. But I'm, I'm yeah, honoured to be part of it and looking forward to what we can create together. No worries. Thanks, Brown. I do appreciate it. No All right, we'll Thanks. leave it there. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for everyone that tuned in. I'm sorry we got cut off and we'll, uh, we'll see you again. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone.